Saint Augustine Commentary on Psalm 68 Of this psalm the title seems not to need uproar's discussion, for simple and easy it appears. For thus it stands, for the end, for David himself a psalm of a song. But in many psalms already we have reminded you what is at the end, for the end of the law is Christ for righteousness to every man believing. Romans 10.4 He is the end which makes perfect, not that which consumes or destroys. Nevertheless, if anyone endeavors to inquire what means a psalm of a song, why not either psalm or song but both? Or what is the difference between psalm of song and song of psalm? Because even thus of some psalms, the titles are inscribed. He will find perchance something which we leave for men more acute and more at leisure than ourselves. Let God rise up and let his enemies be scattered. Verse 1 Already this has come to pass. Christ has risen up, who is over all things, God blessed forever. Romans 9.5 And his enemies have been dispersed through all nations, to wit the Jews, in that very place where they practiced their enmities, being overthrown in war, and thence through all places dispersed. And now they hate but fear, and in that very fear they do that which follows, and let them that hate him flee from his face. The flight indeed of the mind is fear, for in carnal flight, whether flee they from the face of him who everywhere shows the efficacy of his presence, whether shall I depart, says he, from your spirit and from your face, whither shall I flee? With mind, therefore, not with body, they flee, to wit, by being afraid, not by being hidden, and not from that face which they see not, but from that which they are compelled to see. For the face of him has his presence in his church been called as the smoke fails, let them fail. Verse 2. For they lifted up themselves from the fires of their hatred and to the vaporing of pride, and against heaven setting their mouth and shouting, Crucify, crucify. John 19.6. Him taken captive, they derided. Him hanging, they mocked and being soon conquered by that very person against, who, against whom they swelled victorious, they vanished away. As wax melts from the face of fire, so let sinners perish from the face of God. Thou perchance in this passage he has referred to those men whose hard-heartedness in tears of penitence is dissolved. Yet, this also may be understood that he threatens future judgment because thou in this world like smoke in lifting up themselves, that is, in priding themselves, they have melted away. There will come to them at the last final damnation so that from his face they will perish for everlasting when in his own glory he shall have appeared like fire, for the punishment of the ungodly and the light of the righteous. Lastly, there follows, and let just men be joyous and exult in the sight of God, let them delight in gladness. Verse 3. For then shall they hear, Come you, blessed of my Father, receive ye the kingdom. Let them be joyous, therefore, that have toiled, and exult in the sight of God. For there will not be in this exaltation as thou it were before men, 
any empty boasting, but it will be in the sight of him who unerringly looks into that which he has granted. Let them delight in gladness, no longer exulting with trembling as in this world, so long as human life is a trial upon earth. Secondly, he turns himself to those very persons to whom he has given so great hope, and to them while here living he speaks and exhorts. Sing ye to God, psalm ye to his name. Verse 4. Already on this subject, in the exposition of the title, we have before spoken that which seemed meet. He sings to God that lives to God. He songs to his name that works unto his glory. In singing thus, in psalming thus, that is, by so living, by so working, a way make ye to him, he says, that has ascended above the setting. A way make ye to Christ, so that through the beautiful feet of men telling good things, Isaiah 52, 7, the hearts of men believing many have a way open to him. For the same is he that has ascended above the setting, either because the new life of one turned to him receives him not, except the old life shall have set by his renouncing this world, or because he ascended above the setting, when by rising again he conquered the downfall of the body. For the Lord is his name, which if they had known the Lord of glory, they never would have crucified. 1 Corinthians 2.8 Exalt ye in the sight of him, O you to whom has been said, Sing ye to God, psalm ye to the name of him, Away make ye to him that has ascended above the setting. Also exalt in the sight of him, As if sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. 2 Corinthians 6.10 for while you make a way to him, while you prepare a way whereby he may come and possess the nations, you are to suffer in the sight of men many sorrowful things. But not only faint not, but even exalt, not in the sight of men, but in the sight of God. In hope rejoicing, in tribulation enduring. Romans 12, 12. Exalt ye in the sight of him, for they that in the sight of men trouble you shall be troubled by the face of him, the father of orphans and judge of widows. Verse 5. For desolate they suppose them to be, from whom oft times by the sword of the word of God. Matthew ten thirty four. Both parents from sons and husbands from wives are severed. But persons destitute and widowed have the consolation of the father of orphans and judge of widows. They have the consolation of him that say to him, For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord has taken, has taken up me. And they that have hoped in the Lord, continuing in prayers by night and by day, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 5, 5, by whose face those men shall be troubled, when they shall have seen themselves prevail nothing, for that the whole world has gone away after him, John twelve nineteen. For out of those orphans and widows, that is, persons destitute of partnership in this world's hope, the Lord for himself does build a temple, where, whereof in continuation he says, the Lord is in his holy place. For what is his place he has disclosed when he says, God that makes to dwell men of one mood in a house, verse 6. Men of one mind, of one sentiment, this is the holy place of the Lord. For when he had said, the Lord is in his holy place, 
as though we were inquiring in what place, since he is everywhere holy, and no place of corporal space contains him, for with he has subjoined somewhat that we should not seek him apart from ourselves, but rather being of one mood dwelling in a house, we should deserve that he also himself deign to dwell among us. This is the holy place of the Lord, the thing that most men seek to have, the place where in prayer they may be hearkened unto. For as in a great house of a man the Lord thereof does not abide in every place whatsoever, but in some place doubtless more private and honorable. So God dwells not in all men that are in his house, for he dwells not in the vessels of dishonor. But his holy place are they whom he makes to dwell of one mood or of one manner in a house. For what are called tropoi in Greek by both modi and mores, or moods and manners, in Latin may be interpreted. Nor has the Greek writer who makes to dwell, but only makes to dwell, the Lord then is in his holy place. But to prove that by his grace he builds to himself this place, not for the sake of the merits preceding of those persons out of whom he builds it, see what follows, who leads forth men fettered in strength, for he loses the heavy bonds of sins, wherewith they were fettered so that they could not walk in the way of the commandments, but he leads them forth in strength which before his grace they had not. Likewise, men, men provoking that dwell in the tombs, that is, every way dead, taken up with dead works. For these men provoke him to anger by withstanding justice, for those fettered men perchance would walk and are not able, and are praying of God that they may be able, and are saying to him, From my necessities lead me forth by whom being heard, they give thanks, saying, You have broken asunder my bounds. But these provoking men that dwell in the tombs are of that kind which in another passage the scripture points out, saying, From a dead man as from one that is not, confession perishes. Syrac 17.28 Whence there is this saying, when a sinner shall have come into the depth of evil things he despises. Proverbs 18.3 For it is one thing to long for, another thing to fight against righteousness. One thing from evil to desire to be delivered, another thing one's evil doings to defend rather than to confess. Both kinds, nevertheless, the grace of Christ leads forth in strength. With what strength, but that wherewith against sin, even unto blood, they are to strive? For out of each kind are made meet persons, whereof to construct his holy place, those being loosened, these being raised to life. For even of the woman whom Satan had bound for eighteen years, by his command he loosed the bonds. Luke 13.16 and Lazarus' death by his voice he overcame. John 11.43 He that has done these things in bodies is able to do more marvelous things in characters and to make men of one mood to dwell in a house, leading forth men fettered in strength, likewise men provoking that dwell in the tombs. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, verse 7, his going forth is perceived when he appears in his works, but he appears not to all men, but to them that know how to spy out his works. For I do not now speak of those works which are conspicuous to all men, 
heaven and earth and sea and all things that in them are, but the works whereby he leads forth men fettered in strength, likewise men provoking that dwell in the tombs, and makes them of one manner to dwell in a house. Thus he goes forth before his people, that is, before those that do perceive this his grace. Lastly, there follows, when you went by in the desert, the earth was moved. Verse 8. A desert were the nations which you not God. A desert they were, whereby God himself no law had been given, where no prophet had dwelled and foretold the Lord to come. When then you went by in the desert, when you were preached in the nations, the earth was moved, to the faith earthly men were stirred up. And whence was it moved? For the heavens dropped from the face of God. Perchance here someone calls to mind that time when in the desert God was going over before his people, before the sons of Israel, by day in the pillar of cloud, by night in the brightness of fire. Exodus 13.21 And determines that thus it is that the heavens dropped from the face of God, for manna he rained upon his people. Exodus 16.15 that the same thing also is that which follows. Mount Sinai from the face of the God of Israel, with voluntary rain severing God to your inheritance. Verse 9. Namely the God that on Mount Sinai spoke to Moses when he gave the law, so that the manna is the voluntary rain which God severed for his inheritance, that is, for his people. Because them alone he so fed, not the other nations also, so that what next he says, and it was weakened, is understood of the inheritance being itself weakened, for they murmuring fastidiously loathed the manna, longing for victuals of flesh, and those things on which they had been accustomed to live in Egypt. Numbers 11 5 and 6. Lastly, all those men in the desert were stricken, were stricken down, nor were any of them except to found worthy to go in the land of promise. Numbers 14, 23 to 10, 24. Although even if in the sons of them that inheritance be said to have been perfected, we ought more readily to hold to a spiritual sense. For all those things in a figure did happen to them. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 Until the day should break and the shadows should be removed. Song of Songs 2, 17 May then the Lord open to us that knock, and may the secret things of his mysteries, as far as himself, vouchsafe be disclosed. For in order that the earth might be moved to the truth when into the desert of the Gentiles the gospel was passing, the heavens dropped from the face of God. These are the heavens whereof in another psalm is sung, the heavens are telling forth the glory of God. So here also the heavens dropped, but from the face of God. For even these very persons have been saved through faith, and this not of themselves, but God's gift it is, not of works, lest perchance any man should be lifted up. For of himself we are the workmanship. Ephesians 2, 8-10 That makes men of one mood to dwell in a house. But what is that which follows Mount Sinai from the face of the God of Israel? Must there be understood dropped, so that what he has called by the name of heavens, 
the same he has willed to be understood under the name of Mount Sinai also. Just as we said that those are called mountains which were called heavens, nor in this sense ought it to move us that he says mountain, not mountains, while in that place they were called heavens, not heaven. For in another psalm also, after it had been said, the heavens are telling forth the glory of God, after the manner of Scripture repeating the same sense in different words, subsequently there is said, and the firmament tells the works of his hands. First he said heavens, not heaven, and yet afterwards not firmaments, but firmament. For God called the firmament heaven, Genesis 1.8, as in Genesis has been written, Thus then heaven and thus then heavens and heaven, mountains and mountain are not a different thing, but the very same thing, just as churches many and the one church are not a different thing, but the very same thing. Why then Mount Sinai, which genders into bondage? Galatians four twenty four as says the Apostle. Is perchance the law itself to be understood in Mount Sinai as that which the heavens dropped from the face of God, in order that the earth might be moved? And is this the very moving of the earth when men are, when men are troubled, because the law they can't fulfill? But if so it is, this is the voluntary reign, Whereof in confirmation he says, Voluntary reign God severing to your inheritance, because he has not done so to any nation, and his judgment he has not manifested to them. God therefore set apart this voluntary reign to his inheritance because he gave the law. And there was made weak either the law or the inheritance. The law may be understood to have been made weak because it was not fulfilled. Not that of itself it is weak, but because it makes man weak by threatening punishment and not aiding through grace. For also the very word the apostle has used where he says, For that which was impossible of the law, wherein it was made weak through the flesh. Romans 8.3 willing to intimate that through the Spirit it is fulfilled. Nevertheless, itself he has said is made weak, because by weak men it can be fulfilled. But the inheritance, that is the people, without any doubt is understood to have been made weak by the giving to them of the law. For the law came in that transgression might abound. Romans 5.20 but that which follows, but you have made it perfect, to the law is thus referred, for as much as it is made perfect, that is, is fulfilled, after that which the Lord says in the Gospel, I have not come to annul the law, but to fulfill. Matthew 5.17 There is in these words yet another sense which seems to me more to approve itself. For much more in accordance with the context, grace itself is understood to be the voluntary reign, because with no preceding merits of works it is given gratis. For if grace no longer of works, otherwise grace no longer is grace. Romans 11.6 But to humble man he gives grace, James 4, 6. And it was made weak, but you have made it perfect. Because virtue in weakness is perfected. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Some copies, indeed, both Latin and Greek, have not Mount Sinai, but from the face of the God of Sinai, from the face of the God of Israel. That is, the heavens dropped from the face of God, and as if 
and cry we were made of what God from the face of the God, he says, of Sinai, from the face of the God of Israel, that is, from the face of the God that gave the law to the people of Israel. Why then the heavens dropped from the face of God, from the face of this God, but because thus was fulfilled that which had been foretold. Blessing he shall give that has given the law. The law whereby to terrify a man that relies on human powers. Blessing whereby he delivers a man that hopes in God. Thou then, O God, hast made perfect your inheritance, because it is made weak in itself, in order that it may be perfect by you. Thine animals shall dwell therein, verse 10, yours, not their own, to you subject not for themselves free, for you needy for not themselves not for themselves sufficient. Lastly, he continues, you have prepared in your own sweetness for the needy, O God, in your own sweetness, not in his meatness. For the needy he is, for he has been made weak, in order that he may be made perfect. He has acknowledged himself indigent, and he may be replenished. This is that sweetness whereof in another place is said, The Lord shall give sweetness, and our land shall give her fruit. In order that a good work may be done not for fear, but for love, nor not for dread of punishment, but for love of righteousness. For this is to insult freedom. But the Lord has prepared this for one wanting, not for one abounding, whose reproach is that poverty of which sort in another place is said, reproach of these men that abound and contempt to proud men. For those he has called proud, whom he has called them that abound. <laughs>